one. Uh, before we get started, I know normally we don't do the uh, the prayer and the pledge and all that on the informal meetings, but with everything that's been going on in in, in our region with the uh, the shootings in Nashville and the helicopter crashes, I would like to ask uh, Commissioner Jeremiah Walker to to say a prayer for us, please. <clears throat> Gracious God, our Father, we thank you yet again for another day's journey. Father God, we thank you now for what our eyes have seen, our ears have heard, and most of all, Father God, our hearts have felt. But Father God, we come now, Father, with a heavy heart, Father, but we come humbly before you, before your throne. Father God, we come praying now, Father, for those that lost their life in Nashville at the Covenant School, Father. Father God, we pray for those families, Father. We pray for that church family. We pray for that school family. Father God, we pray for the loved ones, Father, who lost the loved one, Father. Father God, we pray that you continue to keep them in their ever-loving care. Father God, let us not forget about our neighbors just to our north, our friends, our family at Fort Campbell, Father, and the loss of everyone in the accident the other night, Father. Father God, continue to lift up Fort Campbell. Continue to lift up those families. Father God, continue to lift us up, Father, that we'll be a beacon of light in this community, Father, that they can see us, Father, and know that they have help. Father God, we continue to pray for all those that were affected by the storms, Father, to the north, the south, the east, and the west, Father. Father God, we pray for them now, Father, that you keep a hedge of protection around them, continue to shield them from all hurt, harm, and danger. And Father God, we'll be ever so mindful and ever so grateful, Father God, just to say thank you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 Thank you, Commissioner. <clears throat> So we do have one citizen to address the commission. We have Deanna McLaughlin with the Military Interstate Children's Compact. Thank you, Mayor. Is there something special I need to do for the slides? Okay, thank you. Uh, my name is Deanna McLaughlin, as the mayor said. I'm the Tennessee Commissioner to the Military Interstate Children's Compact. Uh, a little bit about the compact. It was formed in 2006 with collaboration from different entities that serve military service members and their children, specifically around the issues of educational transfers of military children in concert with the PCS moves of their military parent. In 2010, the Tennessee legislature adopted the compact in the state of Tennessee. It is now a state statute and law. In 2011, Governor Haslam, then Governor Haslam appointed me as the first commissioner to the Military Interstate Children's Compact, and I've been serving in that role ever since. In 2012, we formed the State Council, uh, made up of military service members, other stakeholders, and educators across the state of Tennessee. And most recently, in 2019, we established the Purple Star School Award Program, which recognizes outstanding schools across the state of Tennessee that go an extra mile for military service members and their families. Our compact organization, just to mention, we're housed under the Tennessee State Board of Education. This is a list of our state council members. We have 16 members that um, we meet annually and as needed based on cases that we need guidance on throughout our state. Um, you can see that we have the garrison commander who's here with us tonight, Colonel um, Jordan, who's the garrison commander. We also have the commander of Millington Naval Air Station uh, in East Tennessee. We have a representative for, from Arnold Air Force Base um, and various other representatives, as I mentioned, that serve children in our state. We work in concert with the school liaison officers across the state, specifically here in our community, the school liaison officers at Fort Campbell. Um, different things that arise for military families when they move is uh, Virginia state history may have been required in Virginia and they come to another state where they may require that state's history. The compact allows for that course to be waived at the receiving school based on the law. The children get credit for the courses that they took at the schools prior to arriving in their most current state. These are the stats as to where the majority of the military children are located in the state of Tennessee. And as you can see, the majority of them are right here in our community. And that's why I'm speaking to you all tonight. 
This is a breakout by service of our military children. And yes, we have eight Space Force military children in the state of Tennessee. They fall under the Department of the Air Force. So for a total of just under 15,000 military, active duty military students in our state. I'm here also to talk about Month of the Military Child. Um, it, the logo or the saying is purple up for military children. And the reason this color purple is selected is because if you take all of the colors of the branches of the military and you mix them all together, you get the color purple. These are some common facts that military children encounter. Um, and this is another reason that we recognize military children during the month of April. Um, <clears throat> a lot of separation from parents, um, psychological issues, um, feeling uprooted, frequently moving, having to make new friends, get reestablished in school and sports activities. Um, on average, military children move nine to, it's six to nine times grades K through 12. Some events that are happening locally for Month of the Military Child is the museum is hosting uh, an art show. It's a contest uh, in collaboration with the local USO. And every year on the 19th of April, or whatever Purple Up Day is designated, which this year in the state of Tennessee is the 19th of April, the museum will turn its lights purple. And Ms. Newell usually turns the, the bridge purple just to show um, collaboration and support for military children. If you would like to find out more information about the Military Interstate Children's Compact, here's a nice QR code. Um, <clears throat> when cases arise, usually the military um, family will reach out to their school. If the school isn't well versed on the compact, they'll reach out to the school liaison officers and we all work together to find resolution under the state statute for the children. Thank you for your time. Thank you. All right, we'll go ahead and call this meeting to order, the informal commission meeting for April 3rd, 2023. Starting out, we have a few presentations to get through. And I'll come on down to the podium. So we have three proclamations that we're going to be doing this evening. Um, the first one that we have is for the month of the military child. And this was already on the agenda prior to the, prior to the accident that happened that was extremely devastating. But it's, uh, it's important for us to especially remember and take care of the families of the soldiers that we have that, that serve our country every day. Uh, first of all, I'd like to recognize um, Susan Jordan and her husband, Colonel uh, and Andy Jordan, our garrison commander. If y'all want to give them a round of applause for being with here tonight. <laughs> Would y'all like to come up? So the garrison commander, for anybody that doesn't know, is basically the mayor of the installation out there. Absolutely. Okay. So uh, tonight we have Colonel Jordan and Mrs. Jordan. We have our school liaison officers from Fort Campbell, LaQuavia Garrett and Karen Watkins Juf, and CMCSS Director of Schools, Jean Luda Venner. All right. So, whereas April is designated as the month of the military child stressing the important role our military families have in helping sustain our fighting forces. It is essential to recognize these dependents while their parents serve our nation. And whereas the month of the military child is part of the legacy left by former Defense Secretary Casper Weinberger, who established the commemoration in 1986, and whereas in communities around the world, essential strategic necessities are to establish an educational system that progressively builds the college and career readiness of all military dependents. 
and to challenge each student to maximize his or her potential to excel academically, socially, emotionally, and physically for life, challenging career readiness, and whereas throughout the month of April, we encourage schools to plan special events to honor military children and have administrators and principals incorporate the theme of this month into their everyday duties and responsibilities. And whereas the military youth of today and tomorrow promise to be among the most active and involved populations in our nation's history. And whereas we encourage everyone to wear the color purple during the month of April and light any buildings purple on Wednesday, April the 19th for the official Purple Up for Military Kids Day and to show support for the military child. Now, therefore, I, Wes Golden, Mayor of Montgomery County, and on behalf of the citizens of this great community, do hereby proclaim April 2023 as the month of the military child and recognize the military families and their children for the daily sacrifices they make and the challenges they overcome. So normally we do these at the formal meeting, but there's seven this month, so we decided to split them up to save everybody a little time. <laughs> so the next one we have uh, proclamation with Pet Partners National Therapy Animal Day. Do we have some representatives here? These are the best representatives. <laughs> How are you, sir? Good to see you. All right. Yeah, these are the smart ones. That's right. <laughs> Makes everybody smile. So whereas there are thousands of pet partner therapy animal teams serving in communities across the United States, and whereas pet partners has designated April 30th as National Therapy Animal Day, and whereas pet partners Therapy animal teams in Montgomery County play an essential role in improving human health and well-being through the human-animal bond. And whereas Pet Partners Therapy Animals teams make millions of visits per year in, in settings such as hospitals, nursing homes, schools, and hospice. And whereas Pet Partners Therapy Animal teams interact with a variety of people in our community, including veterans, seniors, patients, students facing literacy challenges, and those approaching end of life. And whereas these exceptional therapy animals who partner with their human companions bring comfort and healing to those in need. Now, therefore, I, West Golden, Mayor of Montgomery County, Tennessee, and on behalf of the citizens of this community, do hereby proclaim April 30th, 2023, as National Therapy Animal Day <laughs> in Montgomery County, and encourage our citizens to celebrate our therapy animals and their human handlers. Further, we salute the service of therapy animal teams in our community and in communities across the nation. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. For the next proclamation, I would like to ask the, the folks with, with the Montgomery County Safety Traffic Task Force to come down, please. 
some commissioners were asking me on the front end, they said, why are all these law enforcement folks here? <laughs> it's a good thing. So before I get into this, I want to brag on Lisa McLean over here a little bit. She is our, our, our highway safety officer, and she does a great job. You know, I've gone to some of these meetings, and to see all these representatives from all these agencies across the state, we really appreciate what you do and what each and every one of you do as well. And working together, it's just absolutely awesome seeing that happen. Thank you all so much. So we have a joint proclamation. Mayor Pitts could not be here this evening, but this is a joint proclamation between the county and the city as well for Distracted Driving Awareness Month. Whereas according to, the, according to the Tennessee Department of Safety and Homeland Security, Clarksville Montgomery County had 477 distracted driving crashes in 2022 and 10,446 crashes between 2011 and 2022, creating loss of life minor to lifelong injuries, economic impacts, and whereas every 25 minutes and 16 seconds a crash involving a distracted driver occurs in Tennessee, creating an economic toll of motor vehicle crashes that exceeds $450 million in damages annually. And whereas talking on a mobile phone, even in hands-free mode, texting, programming, a dashboard <clears throat> infotainment system, or GPS device can divert attention away from driving and result in physical or cognitive distraction. And whereas Clarksville, Montgomery County, Tennessee residents deserve to live in a community that promotes safe driving behaviors. And whereas prevented, preventing distracted driving injuries and deaths requires the cooperation of government, employers, and the general public. And whereas the Montgomery County Driver Safety Program and the Clarksville, Montgomery County Traffic Safety Task Force work to promote policies, practices, and procedures leading to increased safety in business and industry, schools and colleges, on roads and highways, in homes and communities. And whereas the Montgomery County Safety Program and the Clarksville Montgomery County Traffic Safety Task Force will promote a 2023 month-long distracted driving public education campaign. And whereas spring is when more miles are driven, making it imperative to focus attention on motor vehicle injury risk and prevention. Now, therefore, we, West Golden, Mayor of Montgomery County, and Joe Pitts, Mayor of the City of Clarksville, proclaim April 2023 as Distracted Driving Awareness Month within Clarksville, Montgomery County, Tennessee, and strongly urge all citizens to practice safe driving behaviors and pledge to drive distraction-free. Thank you all so much for what you do. All right. Next, we'll move into the public hearing zoning resolutions. Mr. Tindall. Good evening, Mayor and County Commission. All right, I'm here to report on two cases from the Planning Commission this month. Uh, This is last month. Uh, 
Anyway, we'll work. We'll, we'll work off the iPad. Sorry, and unless the, the IT has the other one I sent today. Um, first case up tonight is CZ2 2023. Uh, it's 11 acres. Uh, sorry, that one was deferred by the Planning Commission. CZ4 2023, application of Real Life Church. The applicant is Tim Neusbaumer. It's 9.91 .9 acres, currently zoned ag and requesting to go to C2. It is not an extension of the C2. Uh, it's attractive land fronting the north frontage of Sango Road, approximately 315 feet west of the Sango Road and Shays Way intersection. This is in County Commission District number 15. Uh, the track of land with mature trees and a structure on site. It's a former single family home. Uh, it's currently a uh, office for a church. The applicant statement is to provide a leasable area for coffee shop fitness center within the proposed real life church building. This is in the urban growth boundary. If you look at the map, you can see under the zoning colors that uh, C2 is not really present in the area. Uh, you do have the Sangua Elementary School to the east and a lot of ag and R1A and R1 uh, in the area off of Sango Road. Department comments or concerns. Uh, a traffic assessment was required by the highway department and received and the improvements would be needed to Sango Road and Sango Drive intersection. Montgomery County Highway Department will evaluate the development stage for actual proposal, not necessarily the worst case scenario, uh, being that if the entire parcel is being zoned C2, but only a portion of it's gonna be used for commercial, the rest of it for a church. Uh, it will need a fire hydrant on site, and you can see the school system capacities listed uh, but in the county, C2 is only a, co a commercial zone, unlike in the city. Uh, planning staff does recommend disapproval. The proposed request is inconsistent with the adopted land use plan. The request is not at an ideal location for commercial development and is an out of character with the residential area. The request encompasses 9.9 .9 acres of C2 general commercial, in addition to the request being at a location not recommended for commercial development, the request is excessive beyond the need for this site. No adverse environmental issues were identified. The Planning Commission also recommended disapproval. Thank you, sir. Does anybody have any questions for Mr. Tyndall? All right. So at this time, we'll allow for up to three people to speak in favor and then three people to speak against. Is there anybody that would like to speak in favor of CZ4 2023? Yes, sir. Yeah, please come down to the mic. Uh, start with your name and address, please. And you'll have three minutes. The, the mic will start flashing when it gets, was it the last 30 uh, seconds or so? Uh, yeah, one minute. One minute call? Okay. The ch our church wish they had a flashing light to turn me off on Sunday. That's pretty. My name is Freddie T. Wyatt. My address is 220 Longwood Lane. Uh, it's an honor to be with you. I'm the pastor of Real Life Church. And uh, many of you know Pastor Tim Neusbaumer. Pastor Tim, if you'd stand just uh, so we could see you. And uh, several from our church uh, are here. If you just lift your hand, uh, several from our church came down to be with you. Uh, I want to say a sincere thanks to our county commissioners. You do um, great work in our county, and I want to say thank you on behalf of our church. Uh, we're really excited to break ground on a new church building uh, this, uh, this fall. And since the start of our church, uh, we wanted to be a blessing to our community. So the first thing that we did was adopted four Montgomery County schools and began to invest in the teachers and the faculty and the families in those schools. Um, we were awarded the, the um, Rising Star Award in 2020 for Partners in Education. Um, it's been a real joy to invest in our schools. Well, as we open up our building, uh, we want our building to be a blessing to our community. And so uh, with things like anxiety and depression on the rise, uh, we envision using our lobby as a coffee shop where relationships could be cultivated and folks could overcome the big problem of isolation. And uh, with things like obesity and anxiety on the rise, uh, we envision using our kids' space uh, uh, during the week as a, as a little place for fitness. 
and uh, we envision using the lobby as a free co-working space for our neighbors. Um, we're just excited. Uh, we envision teachers and faculty from Sango Elementary being able to walk across the yard and enjoy a nice cup of uh, coffee before school starts. Um, so it's pretty simple in what we're wanting to do with the church building. We want it to be a blessing to the community. We don't want it to sit empty uh, seven days a week, six days a week rather. Thank you, sir. Would anybody else like to speak in favor of CZ4 2023? Seeing now, would anyone like to speak against CZ4 2023? All right. All right, our next case tonight is CZ5 2023, uh, the application of a, the Masonic Lodge in South Guthrie, and the agent is John Johnson Sr. It's 1.06 acres, currently zoned R3 and requesting to go to C1 Neighborhood Commercial. Uh, that is not adjacent to any other C1. The property is located on Guthrie Road and Osmond Road. This is in County Commission District 19. The, the applicant statement of the property, this property zoned commercial for years, housed a market and a barbershop. It converted back to R3 because the business closed several years ago. The request for the zone change is so it can be used as a takeout catfish business. Um, upon checking with the county codes department, which where this all started, the property was really, it was never zoned commercial. Uh, it had been used in the past, uh, unbeknownst to the code department for those other uses. They mentioned barbershop and market, but has not been used for many years. It has always been used as a assembly place with the Masonic Lodge, but that's uh, acceptable in its current zone. Uh, and the applicants wishing to sell uh, catfish and other fried products uh, as a small dine-in takeout restaurant there in conjunction with the Masonic Lodge. Uh, this is in the planned growth area. Uh, we did not receive any comments or concerns from other departments. Uh, staff does recommend approval. The proposed zoning request is consistent with the land use plan. This request is, well, sorry, this request will bring existing commercial structure into compliance as a permitted use and the request is an extension of the C1 across the street. We recently rezoned that about a year ago. Uh, the county commission was asked to do that for that event center across the street. So you'll have two C1 parcels across the street from each other. Uh, the planning commission also recommended approval. Any questions for Mr. Tyndall? Commissioner Fry. Uh, thank you. Um, I did meet with Mr. Johnson uh, at this property and during my conversation with Mr. Johnson he indicated all along the way during the process of improving his property he communicated with buildings and codes and for the hood system the fire marshal uh, he did everything he knew to make sure he was in compliance with all that Montgomery County might ask him to do uh, it wasn't until he invested tens of thousands of dollars that he was informed that his operation was in a facility that would not permit it under the current zoning um, when a property is grandfathered and has it where it's going back into whatever the original zoning was, do we have a process to alert property owners that their grandfathered zoning has lapsed and would change how they could use it going forward? So the, the zoning of a property would never be reverted back. Uh, this property to our records has always been an R3 residential property used as a Masonic Lodge. Uh, the county code's rules says after 30 months of discontinuance of a use, your grandfathering expires. I don't think they send necessarily a letter out. The burden of proof is on the property owner to prove that the business either existed or had existed during that 30-month period. Okay. Um, and also, you know, just having been in close proximity to general contractors all my life, I can tell you I've heard this story frequently where somebody gets far along on the project trying to be in compliance and then uh, all of a sudden they find out they have to stop. Um, I would certainly like to encourage building codes and the planning commission to explore opportunities to keep our citizens from being in this position. 
uh, the consequences of being tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars into a project while being led to believe everything is fine with, with your project than being told the zoning does not comply can lead people to financial ruin and or bankruptcy. And I just would like to see Montgomery County be excellent when it comes to things like this. Uh, I spoke with the code director and we're gonna look at opportunities to make it clearer the whole process. Thank you, sir. Any other questions for Mr. Tindall? All right, would anybody like to speak in favor of CZ5 2023? Please state your name and address and you'll have three minutes. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon. My name is John Johnson and my uh, address is uh, 5067 North Thomas Road, Colossia, Tennessee. And I'm uh, a citizen up in South Guthrie. And uh, when I uh, was uh, trying to make this deal with the, the Masonic Lodge, they uh, told me that they had, it was commercial. They showed me a, a uh, fact sheet that, that said commercial on it. I've been there all my life and it had, it had uh, always been a, a store from the time I grew up and I'm 77 years old and it was a store and it was a uh, barber shop. And so, uh, I, so I, you know, went in good faith thinking that uh, it was commercial. And so, so uh, now I also heard when we went down to Coles and talked to them and they told me that uh, even if it, those stores, the store that was there and the barbershop that was there, that even if it was, it would, after a year of not being, uh, existing as a business, it would revert back to the original code. So this is why, and they just, you know, uh, asked me to, to apply for a code change, and that's, that's what we're doing. Thank you, sir. Appreciate you. Would anyone else like to speak in favor of CZ5 2023? Seeing none, would anybody? Seeing none, would anyone like to speak against CZ5 2023? All right. We will close the public hearing section of the meeting. Is there any further discussion on any of the zoning CZ4 2023? Yes, Mayor. Um, give me a second. Uh, CZ05 2023. Is there is there an address for that property? I'll have. I'll have Mr. Tindall get an address or the closest address to for CZ5 2023. Yes. Yeah, I'll email that out to the commission here. Thank you, sir. Any other discussion? All right. We'll go into resolutions. <clears throat> we have 2341 resolution authorizing Montgomery County Emergency Management Agency to sign an interlocal agreement regarding the transfer of warning sirens from the city of Clarksville to Montgomery County Emergency Management Agency. Any discussion on 2341? This item is on the consent agenda. Next we have 2342. Resolution to accept funds from the American Kennel Association and United States Police K-9 Association. Any discussion on 2342? Also on the consent agenda. Next, we have 2343, resolution to amend budget to accept grant funds from the Tennessee Department of Transportation Litter and Trash Collection Program. Any discussion on 2343? Also on the consent agenda, next we have 2344 resolution to amend the budgets of various funds for fiscal year 2023 in certain areas of revenues and expenditures. Mr. Taylor, do you want to give us a rundown on that? 
Yes, sir. Most of this is just in regards to the pay plan and the 5% COLA that was given in the fall. Just, <clears throat> excuse me, just adjusting those line items for each departmental budget. A couple of items that were added later on was an adjustment to the JAG grant. It was um, entered twice, so we're just adjusting that one and adding some money to purchasing capital outlay for furniture and to circuit court for furniture as well. They had purchased some chairs back in the fall, in last budget year. They had to send them back, got a refund, and that refund we're using towards the purchase of the chairs in this fiscal year. Any discussion on 2344? It's also on the consent agenda. Next, we have 2345, resolution authorizing Montgomery County to join the state of Tennessee and other local governments in amending the Tennessee State Subdivision Opioid Abatement Agreement and approving the related settlement agreement. Any discussion on 2345? So this is to enter an agreement with the state. Uh, we talked about this at the Budget Committee and Montgomery County was one of the counties that was proactive in, in filing suit for the opioid crisis. Um, and, and this is basically dropping that suit and joining with the state of Tennessee, if that makes sense. Seeing no more discussion, also on the consent agenda, we'll go to 2346, resolution updating employee benefits in order to provide Employee Assistance Program, EAP services, to part-time emergency safety personnel, which will include volunteer firefighters. Any discussion on 2346? It's also on the consent agenda. Next we'll go 2347 resolution authorizing placement of a historical marker at the Montgomery County Historic Courthouse. And the verbiage is in the drop box as well. I believe it starts on page 57 in your drop box. Any discussion on 2347? Also on the consent agenda. Next we have 2348, resolution to appropriate public art funds in the amount not to exceed uh, $200,000 for the purpose of creation and installation of artwork to be installed in the northwest corner of the F&M Bank Arena. So this is something that went through um, the Public Art Committee. Commissioner Bill, would you like to talk about that at all? Or It's a great idea, and I love it. So one thing that I would like to ask that you do, Mayor, can you explain to everybody what the public art special account is and how that works and how that gets funded and all that good stuff because I've had a lot of questions about how that works. Thank you. Yes, sir. So the public art fund, it is it is funded through a, a small percentage of, of bonds that we acquire. So since we appropriate that money that way, it can only be spent for public art. So it's on it's in its own account. I believe it's around seven hundred. Seven hundred right now. A little over $700,000 in the fund currently. Uh, this was brought to us by Frank Lott from the museum. And we've, it went through the public art committee. So we did the RFP to the, do the selections. And if it gets approved, the, the artist has already been selected. And we have a video, and this is from the Civil Rights Museum in uh, Jackson, Mississippi. And this would be specific to our location, it would be one of a kind. It's interactive with um, with light, and, and it also it's also interactive to sound and movement as well. So, if we can go ahead and play that video. <clears throat> This sculpture represents the light 
your unique gift inside you to make a positive change in your community, in your school. So what can you do to make a change? What things can you do to be proud of? Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. It's still light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. Now does everybody in here have a light that they wanna let shine? I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Thank you, IT. So this would go into the in, inside the lobby of the, the largest thinking, lobby over there is the is the F and M Bank all lobby, all and, and Mr. Lott has already done up a lot of the legwork for us, <laughs> and and got permission from F and M Bank as well. So it would it would start in there and then start to flow towards the arena. Is my understanding. So is there any other discussion on 2348? All right, it's also on the consent agenda. Next we have 2349, resolution authorizing the Industrial Development Board to apply site 32 AB cell proceeds to local grant match. And without objection, I'd like to ask um, Mr. Buck Dillinger, CEO of the EDC, to come to the podium. is Josh Ward, the IDB grant manager. He would be managing this grant. So Tennessee Valley Authority has given us permission to seek another grant from them out of cycle, but because of all the great work that's occurred in our industrial park, they've reached out to us and said, if you can find $750,000 of match grant, they would offer us $750,000 for a potential project. The project area that we're looking at is in the North Industrial Park. What we refer to as Site 7, this is the area that's south behind LG Electronics and north of Spring Creek. And we need what would make this 100-acre site more valuable to the site selectors that have looked at that property is to have it rail served. Right now, the rail is not connected to this site, as well as another 90 acres of developable land. So. This area is kind of landlocked road and rail access wise. We're trying to connect road and rail to this area to make it more valuable. So that would make about 190 acres totally accessible if we can uh, pursue and ultimately get this grant. What this resolution here is just identifying a source of funds. These funds came from the sale of other land in the North Industrial Park and by interlocal agreement, 90% uh, of the sale proceeds come back to Montgomery County. Uh, historically, at least in my recent history, whenever we've sold land, if we've got a project and we can improve the industrial land, we've asked the county to allow us to retain those funds and reinvest those funds into the industrial park to make it more valuable. Thank you, sir. Are there any questions for Mr. Dillinger? Thank you, sir. Appreciate your time. Any other discussion on 2349? Seeing none, this is also on the consent agenda. 
The consent agenda consideration items in this portion of the agenda are considered to be routine and non-controversial by the county commission and may be approved by one motion. However, a member of the county commission may request that an item be removed for separate consideration. Any other discussion before we move into reports? All right, so the reports we have for approval would also be on the consent agenda. We have a commission minutes dated March 13th, 2023. We have our county clerk's report and notary list. Nominating committee nomination. Uh, Commissioner Ray, do you have a report for us, sir? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, nominate committee met this afternoon at 530. We had one nomination for the Equalization Board. Mr. David Green, to serve as alternate, is nominated for reappointment for a two-year term to expire of April of 2025. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Commissioner. And then we have the County Mayor nomination and appointments. We have our Community Correction Advisory Board. We have Diva Wilkins. Uh, probation officer nominated to fill the unexpired term of Brian Reeves with the term to expire November of 23. We have Lorinda Taylor, a parole officer nominated to replace Ryan Domini, Domini whose term has expired with a term to expire November of 24. Uh, county mayor appointments. I will have a name for you for the Public Records Commission by the formal commission meeting for Public Art Ad Hoc Committee. David Smith appointed to serve as a member of the Public Art Ad Hoc Committee. Senior Citizens Board of Directors Howard Welch has been filling the unexpired term of Della Lynn Holt Saunders and is now appointed to a three-year term with term to expire of April 26. Stephanie Mason's reappointed to serve an additional two years with term to expire April 25. Donnie DeVault is reappointed to serve an additional three years with term to expire April 26. Mike Williamson is reappointed to serve an additional one year term to expire April of 24. Next we have our verbal reports. School board liaison, Commissioner Gannon. Do you have a report for us, sir? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, the school board met back on March 14th and March 21st. Uh, basically, they went over surplus property for Northeast High School baseball jerseys and Montgomery, and Montgomery Central High School softball three-wheeler. Uh, they also did the first reading on their textbook adoption certification. Uh, they did go over their goal number six, which was to expand and support multiple pathways into the teaching profession. Um, we do not meet tomorrow. The meeting will be a week from tomorrow, April 11th. We'd love to have you down there and see us. And if you're looking for any other information, you can always go to Clarkson Montgomery County School Systems website, which is cmcss.net. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Commissioner. Next, we have our Highway Commission liaison, Commissioner Langford. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, the Highway Commission met on March 27th. Right now, crews are still working to haul storm debris from the couple of storms we've had the last few weeks. They've secured an additional dumping spot south of the river to speed up that progress. 62 work orders were submitted, 30 were completed, and in those numbers, that does not include what they've been uh, working on for storm debris. So that's why those are down a little bit. All crews are working to complete miscellaneous items, prepping for spring. Uh, one thing I've heard a lot about is uh, River Road that's going to be paved this year, and so I know the Citizens out that way will appreciate that. And their leadership team traveled to a conference and took part in tech leadership and efficiency sessions a few weeks ago. Thank you, Commissioner. Next, we have reports filed. We have trustees revised February monthly reports and building code monthly reports. And that's all we have on the agenda. Does anybody else have anything for the good of the body? All right. We are adjourned. Thank you all.